He cannot fail you because He will make His mercies are new every morning, but His personality never changes. Hayaya. Somebody say you. to his word over your life. I am the Lord, I think not. You are the Lord. One more time, somebody say, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, good morning and praise the Lord, Jesus is Lord everywhere, in the heavens, in the earth, in the deep, in hell, oh yes, in death, in resurrection, in animate, in an inanimate things, he is God all by himself, welcome you this morning, gonna go straight into prayer, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse number 7. Lest I should be exalted above measure, Paul speaking. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations that was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Verse 8, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Verse 9, and he said, who said? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost said, Jesus said, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, then Paul declared, Reckon, he reckoned most gladly, wherefore I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Mm. Verse 7 again, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, lest I should be puffed up because of the depth of investment of the spirit in the inside of me ah there was given to me a thorn in the flesh for a few minutes the charge is we are dealing with thorns in the flesh thorns in the flesh thorns in the flesh thorns in the flesh the messenger of satan to buffet me lest i should be exalted above measure to each and every one of us is given a measure of the gift of Christ. The scripture declared, to each and every one of us is given. Oh yes, the gift of God, the gift of the Spirit, the gift that I've been invested in the inside of you is according to the measure of the gift of Christ. It's according to the measure, he's, the Bible declared, is distributed severally, each according to every man's ability. The Bible declared he gave one, he gave three, and he gave five, he gave two, and then he left on a journey based on the adequacy and the kind of capability that these men would carry. He gave them their talent and he left the city. He went about doing other kingdom business so that he can come and reckon with them at the end of the age. It's a prophetic outlook as to how men will have to reckon as to what it is that God has bestowed unto them. You could be watching and you're telling God, what is my gift really? 
How am I going to discover it? What is it that I flow in that can bring glory to God? What is it that I'm passionate about that can bring glory to God? If you figure out that your target is the glory of God, the gift will make manifest. I repeat again, if you target and you figure that the glory is the ultimate, not you, not your name, not making money out of thy gift, not making a, a name for yourself, not building a monument for yourself. If it is that you are targeting the glory of God, that him only should receive the glory, he'll begin fundamentally to deal with, he, with you in the secret place. He'll bring to bring it out through prophet, through men and women out there who will be able to begin to tell you this is it. This is it. If you can do that, keep doing that. Smile like that. Keep on dressing like that. Go strut it out at the, at the, at the, at the fashion show. You're going to make it. Get into business. Sell this product. Begin to talk the way you're talking. Refine it. Become a public speaker. No, you is a preacher. Have you studied the Bible? Study the whole of the Bible in six months. Begin to quote the scripture begin to write someone will be sent across to you you know why because it is the glory you're targeting you're targeting the glory of god but if it is to make money you ask you can as well don't have to ask god what it is you can as well look from the inside you can as well go to an ivy league school you can as well go to every other place but as if it is in this kingdom what i know is that to each and every one of us has been given the measure of the gift of Christ, the measure of the gift of Christ. There is no one who was born empty. No one was born empty. The enemy will come and steal gifts and steal right, left, center because he is a thug. Yes, his work is to come to kill, to destroy. He's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give you life. I thought I should throw that one in as to put you in the place of encouragement and confidence in God. Lest I should be exalted above measure. That was given unto me, Paul speaking. That was given, given, given. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. Lest you should be puffed up through the abundance of the gifting. Lest you become proud and build a movement, a monument out of thy name. Lest you should be exalted above measure. That was given, given, given unto me a thought in the flesh a thorn so, a thorn in the flesh sometimes has not been sent from the pit of darkness it ain't the devil that sent the pit that sent the arrow it could be that the enemy was actually authorized to bring about as it were a delicate balance between pride and humility because God knows what he has invested in the inside of you is too big as I told you yesterday Bring out, uh, cleanse out the dross from the silver, and there shall come out a vessel for the finer. The scripture declared, uh, if the vessel then is of dishonor, if the soul loses its test, uh, in a great house there are many vessels, uh, some to dishonor, some to honor, silver, gold, and everything. The scripture declared, if a man cleanses himself of this, of dishonor, cleanses himself of dishonor cleanses himself of being puffed up and, uh, and, 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 and and proud and this thing about pride let me tell you pride is subtle it's a very subtle spirit it will be in the presence of God it has the audaciousness or the audacity to stand before God and tell the Lord I will build my throne lifted up before God. He didn't say it in the open. He spoke it in his heart. And the monarch of heaven read everything that was in the written in the heart of Sepat. Iniquity was found in him. God still compromised. He still tolerated him until the day when he figured he can be able to overthrow and be able to overturn and be able to run a different kingdom. That iniquity had abounded. He was thrown down. Ah, pride is subtle. As pride is subtle, it's a virus that grows slowly. Then it will begin to manifest through your nose, through your speech. A little bit, a little bit of a blessing here. Oh yes, uh, just a small kind. 
a little bit of pocket change from heaven. The dude can't be able to sit in a prayer circle, can't be able to hold hands any longer, can't be able to, you know, Bible studies. It's too much now. We busy uh, building kingdoms. Pride, uh, a spiritual pride that will make people who've studied the Bible and been in church and figure out they know God a little bit. Uh, hear me. In God's diary, according to his time, if he has any, is that a thousand years is like a day. And then a day is like a thousand years. So go figure. If at all, you can be able to tell the monarch of heaven you know him. It is that you've known him in a day as he pointed to his a thousand years. Yes, I should say that so that it can be able to make you creep under and walk uh, by your foes and creep to the on the toes and just prostrate before the God of heaven who is able to do exceedingly upon seats above the circle of the earth. Lest I should be exalted above measure, Paul declared, there was given unto me a messenger of Satan. Not every messenger of uh, not every thorn in the flesh, rather, has been sent from the pit of hell. God will assign uh, to deal with pride and the puff, puffness of people. He'll come to deal with sin. He can send a man to deal with sin. He can send a man to deal with discouragement. He can send a man that will sit up with you. Like in the days of Job, the four Eliphaz and uh, Belha and the other, the other friend, the three friends just sat up with uh, Job. Uh, and the Bible declared they mourn. They look at him. They couldn't be able to reconcile the billionaire from the pauper right now and the scripture declared they sat with him for seven days as it were never speaking a word to each other just mourning ah he was beside himself but at least there was people there was people there was people there was friends that came and they began to put parables out there to depict what it is that they, that job would have done or sinned against god to call for this type of calamity it was a mere shadow of himself because a thorn in the flesh was put there and god had allowed it and god had allowed it what you need when you're dealing with thorns in the flesh sometimes you don't need to rebuke it sometimes you need grace ah not just the enabling power you need the grace the soul life of god to put you through the crucible of fire to put you through the crucible of temptation to put you through the persecution and distress to bring you out out of your weakness into strength because according to paul he prayed halimasa calibres kavadia three four five times even eight times and there was no answer the scripture declared the answer was my grace is sufficient this morning i present to you the grace of god that is able to bring unto you the inheritance amongst the saints i commend you to the hand of god and to the grace of our lord jesus christ that is able to bring you to the inheritance amongst the saints that by the spirit of holiness he resurrected jesus with power and might and yet jesus had to go through the crucible of the suffering servant of the suffering Christ for him to reign as king. I brought to you today in the name of the Lord that there is a grace abound. There is a grace that can be able to abound in the place of fire, in the place of infirmity, in the place of reproach, in the place where there is no answer from heaven. What you do is to maintain your posture, maintain your spiritual posture, maintain your spiritual posture. Worship him as if there has been an answer. Worship him as if the answer has been released. Don't be compromised. Don't look away because the thorn in the flesh could be an assignment to protect you and to keep you so that your ministry will last so that your ministry will last so that your ministry will last so that your ministry in the face of the earth will last when we speak about ministry we are talking about a microphone and a big old church we are talking about the purpose of god over your life so for a few minutes open up your mouth begin to talk to god tell the lord thorns in the flesh thorns in the flesh they need sometimes the grace of god because it's something that is embedded in your personality and you can't be able to understand why you love God this much and there is a contradiction within thy members why you fear God this much and there is a contradiction within your life 
why is it that you ain't perfect enough enough why can't you measure measure up to the standard of holiness because you are not god you are not god you are you have been created in the image of god born by the spirit filled with the spirit of god washed by the precious blood he makes a work a progressive work of his spirit in your inner being in your inner man by the cleansing by the washing of the water of the word of god you grow you grow you grow you can't be instantaneous in thy growth something is wrong but there is there is a place in god where thorns in the flesh are not supposed to take you out they're supposed to keep you in this narrow road that the path of humility in the path of the face of god because if you become adequate in yourself become so adequate you may not need god at all you may not fear god at all yes yes you might come to the place where you puffed up just a little blessing just a little money just a little marriage here just a little beautiful children and you can find men and women that were before god while they were single people who are paupers before at the backyard of mavare at the backyard of kibra at the backyard of maragua mavare madira at the backyard of condele in the in the in the in the favelas of Brazil and Mexico. Oh yes, can't have nothing. No food one time. And now they have everything they can't be able to do. And they are puffed up. Puffed up, can't pray, can't fast, can't obey, can't sacrifice, can't give sacrificial. Now they're critics of the grace of God. Critics of giving, critics of fasting, critics of the prophetic, critics in the kingdom of God. And so God knew for the investment I've given unto Paul, I want to sustain him. I want him to finish his race. I want him to keep in the, in the straight and narrow. Unless he be exalted above measure. For the prodigals and the vista that I've opened to him. In terms of revelation is too deep for a human being. I must keep him. And the way to keep him is to release two items. Thorns in the flesh. And Satan. A messenger of Satan. To perfect me. To constantly remind him. He's a man. To constantly remind him. He's my servant. To constantly remind him. Run to the cross to constantly remind him run to the secret place i came today this morning to present to you the grace of god that is able to keep them that is able to be sufficient in that prayer life right now in that prayer closet right now when the hunger pangs are calling oh yes where well, yes oh yes when there is compromise everywhere there is a grace of god there is a grace of god there is a grace of god the ayama somante the thorn in the flesh will not take you out the pain in thy body will not take you out the reproach the necessities in persecutions oh yes in distress for christ's sake you will keep the you will keep the imperfect peace because your mind is stayed on him 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 Katose kata gabra kaso taka gabra kata shaka taka pesko bante fabanto la kabara dua leke taka brasko frakas keberi di bi antalia. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you and I ask. I ask for grace. I ask for grace. I ask for grace. I ask for grace. Malus elabarante beguzante kebega duda reke taka zade gabra katos kebega dada shamanan tala kabaka taka baka daga. Gabira kada gada be malum bresko brakatus ke frakatele ke bregaza de gabresko vada. I need your grace in this situation. I need your mercy. This thorn in the flesh feels like it's gonna take me out. Ah, character default and pain of relatives and in-laws and husbands and wives. All manner of thorns in the flesh. Oh, that is compromising my faith and my belief system and my prayer altar. And my altar of prayer is being quenched. It's being taken out. The candle is being taken out because of a thorn in the flesh. I ask in the name of Jesus for grace to sustain, grace to continue in the journey, grace to persevere, grace to press, to press, to press. Because Paul declared, I don't consider myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind. I forget the things that are behind. I forget the past that is behind. Whoever hurt you is gone, is living and chopping life. Whoever divorced could be remarried some place however left you and separated could be somewhere happy you can choose to to 
be happy. You can choose, oh God, to be happy in Jesus. You can choose also to make your own decision. Ah, the partnership dissolved in business. You can choose to go mourn, 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 and lay all the burden on the other partner. Or you can choose to put yourself together, go and register another one, and begin from the trenches, and begin with the experience. Because what did not kill you at all, they say out there, it is supposed to make you strong. But I came with the power of the resurrected Christ to tell you what did not kill you was never meant to take you out. Because the grace of God has been sufficient. The grace of God has been is a thorn in the flesh to just buffet you, to bring you even through tribulation. The scripture declared there has not been an attemptation that has not that has taken you out, or that is not common in the order of men. But even in that one, God is able. Kalis alapo. Amprekesku bakateli. Egedebasku branteli. Mandele gebesku. Risku frakaske pelia. Excuse me. Maluka barante kezidia parata. Mekete kabasku banteli kinala. Libaruses kedidi bi antolia. Mekete tadi teli kabrasko. God is able to bring you out. God is able to bring you out. God is able to bring you out. Someone cry out for the grace of God. The Bible declared in the book of Titus, the grace of God has appeared unto all men. It has appeared unto all men. It has appeared unto all men. And it teaches us to say no. It teaches us to say no to every form of ungodliness. The book of Titus, the scripture declared the grace of God has appeared, has appeared, has appeared unto all men. In Amasoka Braskova, Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear me and hear me well. We are living in desperate times and different times. Ah, these are dangerous times to compromise. God is coming to test, test, test our character, test Everything the scripture declared in the last days. These know also perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of themselves because of a thorn in the flesh. The scripture declared, even Jesus said, When I, the Son of Man will come, will he find faith? Will he find faith? Will he find faith? Oh, yes, the hearts of men will fail because of thorns in the flesh. Satan will bath perfected. Even the saints, even the kingdom, uh, 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 Chang, uh, even the kingdom citizen, even the ambassadors of this. The strength of God, let the strength of God, let the grace of God, let the grace of God, the grace of God that is able to keep them, that is able to keep them, that is able to keep us. Aikatoske prentele, akatibasko brakatata, ekede gaberasko makantele, ikamantoske breketele, ifatus eme kama anakante, makubaku taske begatua, ikabrantele kamanante, mesuvase siri hana kaskalinen, lempre susa, ekede mia patola. Precoske peketeteli, ekadibia to la capacatua, empresco vacatini, until the commandana massa. The grace of God is able, is able to keep you, is able to keep you. We have this treasure in our earthen vessel, and the glory will be of God and not of you. Ah, those that have been kept by the power of God, Peter declared, those who have been kept by the power of God. You can't keep yourself. Ah, you've tried many, many things. How many times? You've tried many times. But there is a God in heaven. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Lest you sit in your house and figure that I healed myself. Lest you should be able to take this and that and figure I know how to concord a solution to this issue. God will bring out uh, something that will blast your brain, blast your Ivy League certificate, blast your first degree class holder. He'll bring out an issue. Out of the corridors of life and bring it to you so that you can rely on the grace of God. All this puffing up and all this brain power and all this inner, inner core power, whatever it is that we get from motivational speakers, I, I, I tend to differ. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible, the scripture, the Holy Ghost is your motivation. He needs to guide you in all truth. Not everything that is motivating from YouTube, from Facebook, and from Ivy League schools and gurus that uh, come out of India and come out of the US and California. Ah, people that have not experienced any spirit of God talking to them, but 
demonic and wicked spirits as, as it regards gurus from the west and gurus from the eastern religion these are things that are permeated even into pulpits now we become more motivational speakers and begin to quote from wicked books things that have been baptized in witchcraft and magic and the philosophies of men ancient wisdom esoteric knowledge that men want to come and look sharp and become uh, sophisticated in their speech so that men can clap hands. I brought uh, a different kind of God to you today and a different kind of the gospel of God. The Holy Ghost is the one that can guide you into all truth and if it is that Holy Ghost he said I prayed uh, three times. In the nick of time, and you finished somehow. Fun, fun, how? Ah, you graduated somehow, somehow. You schooled the children somehow, somehow. The grace of God, lest I should be exalted above measure. Ah, a tongue in the flesh was given unto me so that I can rely on God every time I need school fees, so that I can rely on God every time I want uh, to have a breakthrough. I can go to the altar and having a, 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 a relationship with God in heaven and with my altar on the I lift up my voice and tell the Lord that in all my inadequacies I rely on him till I become like him till my image is turned in that very glass the scripture declare we all with an open face behold as in a glass and so the beholding is as a result of me seeking seeking to tell the Lord that this buffeting has become too much this 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 tone in the flesh has become too much this guy this brother this sister this guy this man this this lady, this CEO, this supervisor has been on my case. Uh, unless you don't want to take him out, um, give me the grace. Uh, give me the grace. Uh, give me the grace. Someone open up your mouth uh, and tell me here. Uh, and tell the Lord, uh, let it abound. Uh, let the grace of God 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 abound. Lest I should be exalted above measure. There was given unto me a thorn in the flesh. A thorn in the flesh. A thorn in the flesh. These are stuff that you cannot just rebuke. There's things in the spirit. There are dimensions in God that he allows. Like in the days of Job, he couldn't rebuke nothing. He couldn't be able to give a sacrifice enough to bring him out. Until God had square it with the devil. Two entities. One was wanting to show the sovereignty and the other one was wanting to show the weakness of the creature that God created because it is one of those guys Eliphaz should be Eliphaz that said at night when I was sleeping I beheld an image ah, and darkness came and crept in my bed and a wind blew and suddenly I heard a voice and it was the voice of the devil speaking bringing an apparition and a vision to one of the friends of David to out of Job to compromise his faith in God and blessed be the name of the Lord because Dave, uh, as, uh, uh, Job had the perception that this is not from the Spirit of God. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know in this it shall turn even by your prayer even by your prayer Paul declared in the book of Philippians ah yes oh yes I know this shall turn this shall turn this shall turn it will turn it will turn by your prayer by your prayer the book of Philippians the scripture declared in the book of Philippians 1 and verse 19 for this I know uh, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ I know that this will turn ah uh, COVID will turn the tide will turn by our prayer and by the supply of the Spirit death will come down death rates will come down the statistics will change life will have to come back to normal by prophecy and by the Word of God in your mouth and by the word of God in his God servant's mouth. He will speak a word out of the realm of the spirit and according to the expectation of your hope that is in God it will not be cut short. It will not be disappointed. It's a thorn in the flesh. COVID-19. A thorn in the flesh. They are saying we could be living with this thing but we know that we are of God and the whole world lied in wickedness or lies in wickedness even right now. The wickedness of the wicked will not come neither dwelling. That is the whole 
hope. That is the faith. That is the confession. That is the belief. It will not come, neither it will. Hinder. It don't matter what kind of pawn in the flesh is in your house, is in your body, is in your mind. It don't matter what it is that has come to you. I speak to you the word of the Lord this morning. I commend you to the grace of God. I commend you to the grace of God. He will say it is sufficient enough. Sufficient enough. Some things you can't bind. Some things you've got to go through. Some things you can't run away from. Some things you've got to go through. You can't run away from toddlership. You can't run away from the obstetrics. You can't run away from teenagehood. Ah, you can jump and wake up like Adam, created as an adult, having shortened the process. No, you can't wake up like that any longer. All men have got to go through the matrix of being bathed. And they get born, they get washed, they cry, they get to be slapped, they get to be corrected, they get to be here. Oh yes, with a rod of correction. They got to be fed, 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 until they grow to a certain place. But declared, to whom shall we teach doctrine? To whom shall we teach doctrine? To them that have been weaned from the milk. And they said, line upon line, will I teach these people even with a foreign tongue? Ah, Paul speaking in the book of Hebrews, the letter that has been written to all the saints in the kingdom of God. The Hebrew book or the book of Hebrews is a letter that is open. It's been given to the church. It's not specifically addressed to certain people. It is addressed to the last day church. And it's Satan. Ah, strong meat is for them that are matured, who by reason of use have their senses exercised. The scripture declared where I've quoted to you again, 2 Corinthians 4, the Bible declared lest I should be exalted above measure that was given unto me. I found in the flesh. God knew the investment of his gift, of his anointing, of his star in Mobin Paul. And some of you are watching here tonight, uh, this morning as you're praying, uh, the stuff that God has invested in the inside, the star, the kind of investment in the inside of you is the one that is attracting all hell, is attract the kind of prophecy hanging on your door and hanging on top of your head, is the kind that is attracting all manner of warfare. I present to you and I commend you into the hands of the grace of God today. His grace is sufficient. Don't sit there and die. Why sit we here and die? We shall cross over, drag ourselves there. If we die, it we die. If I perish, I perish. As the said, I will get into the king's court in the presence of the king. If I perish, I perish, having come from a prayer closet. If I perish, I perish. The grace of God is it that will, you, it will grant you enough confidence and power that you can be able to do everything that you need to do, despite and in spite of pain, despite and in spite of sorrow. Men have preached with COVID-19 in their body. Some have preached with sickness in their life. Some have preached and taught. Men have done everything to serve this God while their children are haywire. While someone is in the penitentiary, a wife is dying with cancer and yet they've got to be in the pulpit and speak the word of the Lord because grace has commanded them. Grace has put to them. The thorn in the flesh is not going to take them out. Ah, what about you? A little bit of that and you're out. A little bit of this and you can't confess right. A little bit of this and you want to scare God with big words. And if you don't show up at this hour and if you don't do this and that and this and that. And there are men that have been in the crucible of Paul. They, the fire was too much. The pain, the sorrow was too much. Oh yes, mourning right, left and center. Stuff is happening in their family. And yet they came with an anointing. They came in the volume of the book. That does not mean the man of God should not go and rest, should not go and address. That God should not intervene at the particular hour. But it's a thorns in the flesh that God will allow. That sometimes his glory will be made. Ah, it will be perfectly seen. That his power will be perfectly seen. So that all oh, the glory of God will be made available. And man will come into the place of the fear of God. Alika so cabrasco badede, la mante que na cada dia sola cabrasco facatale, em peques com a catulia caita legarada, cemento savina cadua. Open up your mouth this morning and tell the Lord, as I've heard the man of God share this morning, I come in the volume of the book. I need this grace. I need this grace because of this pain, because of this thing, because of that sorrow, because of this. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, we have obtained.
obtained an inheritance. Oh yes, it is already predestined according to the purpose of God, according to the purpose of God. But there is a place in God uh, that until the soul have to go through the crucible. Sometimes it is training. It's the process of God to bring out the oil, to cleanse the impurities of the oil, to bring you out, uh, to bring you out before people. For the grace of God is able. For the grace of God is able. Oh yes, we are saved by grace. Ah, uh, and by faith. We are saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. Nobody again should boast. The reason why there are thorns in the flesh is so that no one should boast. So that no one should boast. Lest I should be exalted above measure. There was given unto me. There was given unto me. There was given. Given unto me. Given. 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 Released. It was allowed. It was allowed. And so sometimes it is a thorn of the flesh with a, a, a congenital heart condition of a son. A congenital condition. Blood condition. Uh, uh, something to do uh, with disability. Something to do with uh, stuff that sometimes is difficult to be able to oh, comprehend. Why is it uh, that I serve this God? I fear God this way. I love him. I worship him. He has washed me clean from all of my sin. I am saved. I am born again. Uh, I serve in the kingdom of God. Uh, I put all and, and, and uh, all of my effort in this kingdom. Why is it that this baby cannot be healed? That this son cannot be delivered? Why is it my daughters are haywire? Why is it that the job is not coming? Why is it that I'm not employed? Why is it that this does not come? Why is it that I'm struggling with favor? Why is it that marriage is not coming through? Sometimes it is a thorn in the flesh to build character lest you should be exalted above measure that you prayed one month and it was answered two years and it was answered so they can know you as a prayer guru that you prophesied and it was done uh, lest you should be exalted above measure sometimes the thorn in the flesh is to keep you humble and the bible declared they came unto jesus and they said who is it that he has sent who is it that sinned that this boy should be born this way they were predicating the sickness to legality or to a legal ground that a curse that is not causeless will not come. And that this one looks like all signs that there was a cause as to why this boy should be born this way. He said, <laughs> not his mama, not his daddy, not even the man himself, that in the studio of God, we created him this way. We put him into time. We put him into time in the realm of men. We knew that will come in the flesh one day and give him back his set of eyes. Alima. Ela maroske prekes kupa katoa. Ay, for those he called, for those he knew, he predestined. Alima na kanto leke begezus katakia. Kedidi bi asko pakatuda kapakatula. Ante kene kalakara skofraske begadua. Embrezuta sadidi bi antolia. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord. No. Ah, I misunderstood before. Now I understand well. Now my eyes are open. Now I know. Aimini kasko prakasko fadidia. Empress kofa katidi bi antolia. Ah, for him, for whom he did for no. He also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst every brethren. Moreover, he that he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, Romans chapter 8 and verse 39, who can be against us? What shall separate the parent? What shall separate the man? What shall separate the young one that has that congenital, con con congenital condition? Born with that kind of issue. Born with that kind of issue. Ah, uh -huh. what can separate his, his love for the born, for the baby? What can separate the parent? Ah, uh, the Bible declared, who is it that has sinned? Is it him? 
Is it his daddy? Did mama do something in the bloodline? Was it it? What is it? Jesus said, not his father, not his mother, not even him. But in the studio, the glory is supposed to be seen. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Ah, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh. A thorn was that blindness. Born that way. A thorn was that a messenger to buffet and to give uh, evidence that your God cannot heal, that your God cannot save, that your God cannot deliver. Not in this hour. It might be three hours. It might be three years. It might be 30 years that you've been in that condition. It doesn't matter. I present to you the love of God. What shall separate the you from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, persecution, shall famine and nakedness, shall perish of the sword and as it is written for thy sake we die we die we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things his grace is sufficient in all these things you are a conqueror in all these things you are a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you for I am persuaded her neither death nor life the things that men fear neither death neither life nor angels, principalities, need to even powers, the things present and the things to come. No height, no depth, no any creature shall be able to separate you. Separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lest I should be exalted above measure. The grace of God can enter into a certain depth. Into any depth. And enter into any height. It can go high. You, I came all the way to persuade you. That this morning there could be a thorn in the flesh. In your family. In your system. Whatever it is that has been in your life for far this long. I decree and declare. In the grace that God has given me. I commend you into the grace of God. The set of eyes were restored to the man. Who is it that sin? Because it is in the realm of men that people get to judge by their expectation. They judge people by their expectation. Judge people. Oh yes, judge, judge everywhere. Judge everywhere. Lali maruske brentele. Mako pasko pakatua. The grace of God. Kali marusa. I commend you to the grace of God. He's able, he's able, he's able. You are more than a conqueror. Stay on in the grace of God. His abundant grace, his abundant grace, his abundant grace, his abundant grace. He's able to take care and to cover you in the days of the thorn of the flesh. In the until you come out glorious, until the vessel is made for the finer. The grace of God will keep you through the furnace, through the fire, through the water. He will bring you to a large place. He'll bring you to a large place. He will bring you to a he will bring you to a large place. It is Yahweh, Yahweh. So we'll lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. So we'll lift you high. of God is getting ready to be uh, multiplied. The grace of God be multiplied, be multiplied. You alone deserve my worship. To be multiplied over that condition, over that issue. He is well able to answer. He will. <laughs> but the grace of God is able to keep you while he's coming to town. It does not take God eternity to do that which is eternal. It does not take God eternity to do what that is eternal. But he said, my grace is sufficient, Paul. Oh yes, I am made path. My strength is meant to be seen perfectly so in thy weakness. In thy weakness. In thy weakness. In thy weakness. Some say that Paul was a short man. Some say Paul had a first deformity, according to theological, uh, uh, to the history of the church. Some say he had uh, Makengeza, his eyes could not be able to turn right, left, and center. Uh, they were all compounded. Uh, some say that he had sickness in his body, affliction. Some say he was very ugly in regards of the face, deformity, or, or, or uh, palsy that was on his face. It don't matter. The man wrote three quarters of the scripture. 
with that kind of buffeting, with that kind of weakness, with that kind of the thorn in the flesh. He was able to distil, to distill mysteries from the particles of the Spirit of God, from the womb of the Spirit. He was able to do exceedingly. Ah, than all of them, he said, but I labored above all of the disciples. I labored above them. Not me, but the grace God has availed unto me. And he said, I will boast then thereof. I will boast then thereafter. I will boast in the glory of God. In the glory, I will boast in him. I will boast in him. His boast was in God. His boast was in God. His pride was in God. That God, through his many, many weaknesses, would be able to trust him with depth of revelation. What is it that has been in your life that looks like it cannot go? Ah, that is in your flesh, that is around you, is a, is a thorn in the flesh. You can still accomplish the purpose of God over your life. You can still accomplish the purpose of God in your life. You can still accomplish the purpose of God in your life. And therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I commend you into the hand and I commend you to the grace of God that is able to keep you and bring you into an inheritance amongst them that are called and sanctified. I bring unto you the grace of God this morning and I commend you into that grace in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. So shall it be. So shall it be. So shall it be. Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Till you see you by the grace of God sometime today in the afternoon the grace of God is able the thorn in the flesh will be taken care of the Lord will bring you out as gold he'll bring you out as a vessel for the fire keep your head up keep your faith high keep your prayer your, your, your knees on the ground dig deep in intercession and prayer dig deep in the word of God that is able to give you an inheritance Ah, he said for thou have known the scriptures since you were a baby since thy youth that is able to make thee wise and give you an inheritance among those that are sanctified Paul speaking to Timothy I present to you the grace of God I commend you into it one more time in the name of Jesus Amen and Amen and Amen been your host prophet john haggai saying if it is not god we serve then we serve nothing at all until i see you again by the grace of god this afternoon i am the first lady love you to life amen and amen so we lift you high yahweh yahweh This song says, you will never ever change. You are the Lord and you remain the same. How many of you believe that with me tonight? Whatever he has said about your life must come to pass. Because he is the Lord and he never ever changed.